Hey guys, this is Sarah with Sarah Lee Crochet and Fabrics, and I will be showing you guys, I will be combining both of my love of crochet and fabrics today. We will be making a mud rug, which is um, a square coaster. That is the plan anyway. I have not made one ahead of time, so everything is going live when I'm doing it. So this is the fabric I'll be using. It's a leftover fabric. I got this from overseas. And I have a little bit left over, so it's not really much to make anything. I mean, I could do part of it a quilt, but it's not one of my favorite prints. So I like the colors, though, so I guess I decided to make a mud rug. So the fabric is 14 inches by 60, so it's pretty long in length, which is great. So honestly, let's get started. So I don't measure anything. I just pretty much, I guess I would try to do so for you guys. So... I go about a half an inch um, where I cut the fabric. Let me show you. So I just go on the edge here and I do about a half an inch and I just do a little snip and the rest of it I just rip it. And I would try to keep this in frame but it's a pretty lengthy fabric. And that's it. And so I have one strip. Let me do another one with you guys. And so I just start to cut here, roughly about a half an inch. Okay, so I will do the rest of those um, out of frame. But like this, you see how, if you can see, there is a um, little bit of fray. I just go down, just pull that off, and just bundle it up. And that's about it because the fraying will actually be kind of cute at the end. But what we really want to do here is how do we join these pieces um, to make one ball of yarn. So what we do, go to the ends here. So you'll have two ends together like this. So I go ahead and overlap it about an inch, right? So I overlap it and then I bend it. You know, So I overlap it an inch and then right in the middle of the inch I bend it. And what I do, I do a little cut right in the middle. So I overlap it, and then I put a cut right here, guys. Okay. So now what we have is a hole in both pieces of fabric. Okay. So let's say this side over here is the ball I currently have, and I've been connecting it all day. And this piece here is the new piece, okay? So I always like to put that new piece on top. So that's the piece I have on top. I still have this little hole here. And I take the end of that new piece and I pass it under the hole. Pass it all the way through, but you have to go under. And then I pull it all the way out. Sometimes if you have stragglers, and you just pull it. And you have a knot. Okay, let's do another one. So put this here. This is what we've been working on. And then we get a new piece. And depending on the fabric, you might have some fraying, of course. I just pull it off. And I have a little basket here I kind of throw it into. But yeah, let's go ahead with another piece. So I have the ball of yarn, let's say on this side. I have the new piece here. So I overlap that about an inch, just like so. And then I bend it in the middle. And I clip it. Put a little hole in it. Okay, because I want the hole to be in both. So I have the new piece over here and the old piece here on top of each other. I got that hole right there. I have the new piece. New piece always is on top. So then I take that new piece, the bottom of it, pass it under. Okay, pull it all the way through and, th and tighten it. And that's how we do it. You want another one? Let's see, do I have another piece created? I already did it all. Okay, here's another piece. All right, so new piece I'm adding on right here. Putting it up on top of the bundle. One inch, bending it in the middle. And putting the little hole there. Okay. Doesn't have to be a very big hole. Okay, so I have my hole. My finger can almost go through it. Then I am grabbing the ends of my new piece, passing it underneath. It has to be underneath or it won't tie right. Passing that underneath, pulling it all the way through. I kind of hold both until I pulled it all the way through. And then 
I'll just tighten it. And there we go. All right. So I will go ahead and make more of these and come back when we are ready to crochet. Hey guys, Sarah with Sarah Lee Crochet and Fabrics. I am back. And this is the ball of fabric yarn I have all put together and ready to go. I did locate my Nashville Starbucks mug because I want to use this as a reference for size to make my mug rug. So, oh, I want to show you guys the mugs. I know there's a lot of mugs collector. It's not used. I just keep it in my, <laughs> in my crochet room because I love it. And then I have my scissors. I prefer the metal hooks. Um, with fabric yarn just because to me it slides better through the yarn um, I've tried using the rubbery like these hooks I purchased right here and it was just really it was hard to get it through so I prefer the metal hook for this so it looks like about a chain 15 plus 2 is the right length so let's go ahead we'll leave a little tail let's go ahead and make a loop so this is a 6.5 crochet hook of course, I have my scissors. They just accidentally matching, but that's a good thing. So we will be crocheting 15 plus two. So let's get started. Oops. And we wanna make everything as loose as possible. So no tight tension. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 plus 2. Okay, and then we are going in the third chain from the hook. So there's there's one chain, two chains. In the third one, we are doing a half double crochet. And just keeping that all as loose as possible. The chain two does count as a half double crochet. I do have a tight tension so it make it takes a little bit for me to get used to it when I am doing um, fabric crocheting but it's something new you know you get used to it I really like this idea um, actually because if anyone I've said before I am born and raised in West Africa Liberia and a lot of times especially in my country it's hard to find yarn but there's beautiful fabric because uh, a lot of people sew it's just something you learn when you're very little and people typically sew their own clothing or they take it to tailors because um, everybody sew pretty much but people also crochet a lot and so sometimes it's hard to find yarn and I think this would be a good idea to make items for your home and use what you have. So let me just count this real quick one. Two, three, four, okay. okay, so you go ahead and do one chain to turn and then you will just go ahead and do a half double crochet in every stitch again. And you will just do that over and over. I'm going to do five Five, well, maybe six rows total and then come back we'll see how it looks like before we move to the next part so let me just go ahead and crochet as you can see I'm getting a, a lot faster now because I've gotten used to it a little bit so it takes a little bit to get used to fabric yarn especially I've been crocheting with my acrylic yarn most of today so it was a little weird getting used to the fabric yarn but it's all good and you can use, you don't have to use just regular fabric. Um, and you see, sometimes it will have a, f a little fringe in. I just chop it off. Um, and if you don't have to use like yardage fabric, if you have fabrics from a t-shirt, an old dress, um, bed sheets are pretty awesome. That maybe have holes or something you might not be using anymore. So instead of trashing it, you can make it for something useful again. I think people, I've seen like people make different things I've seen rugs so there's a lot of things I'm sure that people can make I just started with small items 
Okay, so that is the second row. This is how it's looking now. So I am going to do four more rows and I'll be back. Okay guys, so I'm back. I ended up doing seven rows, which ended up being the right size for this particular mug. Okay, so when I weave, I just went ahead and tie it off at the ends. And then with this, I don't thread this through a darting needle. I just kind of pull it in and out throughout the product, the um, work, and just kind of pull it through stitches with a smaller hook. And that seems to work pretty well. Okay, so this is what we have so far. And now I wanted to do some fringes, okay? I haven't done those before. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do is measure... I don't think I need it that big, but... So I'm kind of measuring the length that I think is a good length. Of course, I'll cut some, but it's better to have a little extra than um, too little. So I'm measuring this. It looks like that's about the fringe I want. So just in case you want to know, the length is will be 10 inches. Okay, that's what I'm working with. So I'm going to cut a few of those. And then let's see how that goes. Okay. Is that 10? Okay, no, this is supposed to be half. Okay. So let's go ahead and add that on. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to choose the very corner here, use my smaller crochet hook, and find the very last stitch at the corner, pull it through, okay, and then do a knot. Sorry guys, you know I do everything live. Let's see how that looks. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the over, I don't know if you call it an over knot. So one of them will be, the one on top will be a little bit longer, and then I will just go over and under, and let's see how that looks. Okay, I think that can work. And then I'm going to find where the other stitch, the other row ended. So this is the top of this row, and then I'm going to pull in the next piece here. Okay. And go under and over. Just tie it. Okay. So I'm going to go and do that in between every row, and I'll be back. Okay, guys, so I have the mug rug here. I also brought in the original pieces I did, which are these... Um, regular coaster size coasters and then I also made a larger one for um, either a teapot or a really extra large mug so as you can see you just sit your mug on it and it's really really cute and it's cotton fabric so it will absorb any liquids or anything you know so that it doesn't sc um, scruff your table and it's just cute it's unusual if you're a person who like handmade or the boho vibe or reused um, items you can you will certainly love this because you can use anything if you have an old dress you know that is no longer wearable and, but you love the fabric cut it up and make something out of it so I'm sure there's a lot of items on Pinterest that um, you can use using fabric yarn so there's that right there and then what I'm gonna do now since I've added all of the little fringes I am going to try to cut this as close as possible to being straight but that's the thing it doesn't have to be perfect so I'm just gonna go down try to do it straight here and just chop that off looks pretty good sometimes you do have to go in and get some extras and I'm going to flip that over And you can certainly measure it if you like, um, but I'm not going to. Just make sure that both sides are somewhat equal. I'm just going to eyeball it. And I will save these um, pieces of fabric for stuffing. I have a bag where I put all of those in for maybe um, our, um, little stuffed animals, crochet, or um, sewn. So that's what I would do with those. And I just kind of stretch it out again. And you can, if you have a lot of fraying, you can just kind of put your scissors flat on it and just kind of cut some of those off. I didn't have a lot of fraying. But you can certainly do that. And it, I think it's beautiful. I think it's a great way to use up fabric. If it's especially if it's a sentimental fabric or a shirt or something of that nature, it will work great. But this is how it looks like with your mug on it. I think it's super cute. Let me know what you think. And you can cut your fringes um, shorter if you like, or tie it a certain way that you like. That's totally up to you. But I think it's cute. Let me know what you think, guys. Um, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And everyone have an amazing Thanksgiving. I cannot wait to get into eggnog pound cake is my favorite um i did also get eggnog ice cream <laughs> which guys eggnog and tea is really good i'm just saying like make you a regular cup of tea and then put 
I put a lot of eggnog, like a half a cup, and it is so good whether it's hot or is it, I like it hot, but you can do it cold if you want, but try it out. Um, let me know what you think and how your Thanksgiving is going. Everybody have a great day. Bye.